Dee 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 My lord. Dee 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 I yay verily want to munch. Huzzah! I yay verily want to munch. Huzzah! It's a Ren Fair uh, yeah. version of the Munch Squad theme song. It's a podcast within a podcast. Uh, usually I read press releases before I uh, do them, and I'm going to roll the cosmic dice here on this episode of My Brother, My Brother, and Me and tell you about Taco Bell revealing spicy details of its new pop-up hotel. Oh, my God. Okay. So, yeah, so they're getting in the hotels with... It's called The Bell. Now, we've definitely not talked about this before because, God, that's weird. Yeah, no. I mean, we may have mentioned it, but we didn't have all these fucking spicy details, Trav. The Bell. Okay. A Taco Bell hotel and resort opening in Palm Springs in August. It's a limited time experience, but as this uh, press release certainly reminds me, all things are limited time. And this is a great application (laughs) of the time that you have on Earth is to go to the Taco Bell Hotel, which is called The Bell, available for a limited time. Uh, what What is going to make The Bell uh, such, a, such an incredible experience? Is that what I hear you asking? What are your top questions about The Bell? Are you asking us? Oh, yeah. No, it, what, was, hey, it what, was kind of rhetorical, but I was also curious. What... Um, is the are food, there on site restaurants? Yes, yeah. thank you. The food, yes. Here's what's going to be at the, the Bell. It's Taco Bell. <laughs> and, and there's also an unexpected take on a resort poolside menu. I guess unexpected when you're staying at the Taco Bell Hotel means not Taco Bell. So there's the two things you could do there at Taco Bell and not Taco Bell. So you're looking at maybe. Um, a toasted cheddar club with hand breaded crispy chicken, jalapeno bacon, avocado, sharp cheddar, it doesn't matter. Or an avocado tostada. Okay. Served on local multi grain toast with avocado breakfast radish. So this uh, press release is bold enough to imagine a world where I would be the sort of person that would go to the Taco Bell Hotel and then say, uh, Excuse me, is this bread local? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> is this local multigrain toast from the region? But it Think- also implies that there is a person who's like, I'm going to go out of my way to stay at the Taco Bell Hotel, but I yes. don't like Taco Bell food. <laughs> it's just right. that it's just closest to my convention. Think outside the bun. Purchase local. Um. So there's going to be a uh, Baja Blast birthday freeze. Uh-huh celebrating the 15th anniversary and it's going to be served in the first ever freeze lounge to keep things chill Hmm. so i guess this is a very cold lounge perfect for enjoying uh the baja blast i would argue we already have those and they're called morgues yeah but there will be a on-site morgue perfect for enjoying a baja blast here's a quote quote i got a quote all right it's from Rene Piscotti. He's the executive chef of the Bell. They have Hell one of them? Let's be on- Hell yeah. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Food is the best part of traveling. A lot of effort and homework goes into finding out the best places to eat near where you are staying. What is this accent? <laughs> I love it. It's Rene Piscotti. Don't, but don't with the Bell, we thought of everything for you. Do you mean Taco Bell food? <laughs> from welcome beverages to room service to build your own breakfast tacos and surprises throughout. What? Whoa, wait, hold on, you can't just say surprises throughout. Surprises without. Uh, Many of which feature local ingredients, like our horchata date smoothie. We're curating the ultimate Taco Bell food experience. So the Bell is a hotel that has the bravery to look at the Taco Bell menu and say, well, certainly not this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Certainly you didn't intend on consuming this. Do you guys know what, uh, I think it's pronounced Halocline is? No. This no. is when, uh, usually in like an underwater cave, like really salty salt water and fresh water, uh, like refuse to mix. And so it creates like a visible surface from one water to the other. 
that yes. you can see. And I'm wondering if there's one of these at the front door of the Taco Bell Hotel because of how many farts, like concentrated, <laughs> condensed, like <laughs> fart air is in there that you literally can see like a visible air surface. Uh, um, yes. Uh, welcome to the hotel. I do have to warn you, our air is flavor blasted. So you're going <laughs> yeah, to need to wear this special diving mask. <laughs> It's it's local farts, <laughs> locally sourced farts. These are farm to table farts. Um, the fun, the fun you ask? Well, they've got the fun. While the daytime DJs play jams, this is basically mm. some someone's nephew hooked up Spotify. While daytime DJs play jams, surprise performances will kick off after the sun goes down for guests at the bell. Fans can bring home the same vibes to their own summer plans with curated playlists from Feed the Beat Artists, a Taco Bell program that has helped more than 1,600 artists and bands discover new fans. Mm. Huh. Mm. Ah. And ladies and gentlemen, coming back to the stage for the fourth time today, Eddie Money. <laughs> Eddie's, back. Eddie's back. Hey, what's up? Yeah, they asked me to do it again. Uh, and I said, so here I am. I said, you got any more crunch wraps? And they laughed and laughed. Anyway, I've got two <laughs> tickets to paradise. <laughs> they didn't answer my question, but I'm, I'm assuming they're out. <laughs> I want to go to this place with a desire that I'm not sure I can quantify mm -hmm. with the sort of linguistic tools that we trade in on this show. We very rarely get into sort of uh poetry or or epic uh narrative at all and i feel like that's what i would need to sort of communicate the desire with which i really 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 want to go to the bell yeah if i may justin i it seems to uh -huh. me to be a bit of a siren song drawing you mm. into the cheesy ocean to crash upon the nacho rocks like you know it will be your undoing yeah. But you're not, drawn to it. <laughs> you're, let me remind you, you're going to have to sleep here. Yeah. <laughs> that is hard. That is hard. The other thing that I'm struggling with is I've eaten at Taco Bell many times. My reaction physically and mentally after that is always never again. Yeah. I swear to myself, never again. But now I'm sleeping in a place where they make it. Mm. I'm sleeping at the belly of the beast, as it were. That's that's hard for me. That's tough. Can I read a Yahoo? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, there's a Taco Bell gift shop, by the way, mm. where you can buy. It's got, I'm looking at right now, a Taco Bell is life tie clip, mm. which imagines a world where you would be someone with a Taco Bell is life tie clip, but also have any use for a tie yeah. at any point in your life whatsoever. Um, well, there's a lot of. I can think of a couple. Okay. Uh, CEO of Taco Bell. <laughs> Court date. Yeah, ba bail arraignment. <laughs> I've never used this in self-defense before, but dun 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 here I am, dun rock you like the Munch Squad. I want a munch. This is the Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast, and it's waning years. Still, still the twi- Hold on, I need a little sip of my cab before we move on. Wet the comedy whistle. Um, this... And thank you, Bookhouse Brewing. Um, this... Okay, Paul's just going to keep... Okay. Uh, I'll just keep doing my jokes. Thanks, Paul. This outrageously... Oh, you don't have to do that. Hey, you guys did really good. Yeah, y'all crushed it. Paul and Storm yeah. did so good. Do you guys want to come back out and finish the show? Okay. All right. This outrageously kinky ice cream store is coming to Victoria in July. Wow, I don't like any of that. <laughs> None of it's good. None of it's good. This is from Kat. Thank you, Kat, for sending in this outrageously kinky ice cream store oh, coming to Victoria in July. I've been on the internet a while. It's going to take something pretty wild for me to qualify it as 
outrageously. We used to we used to advertise for a sex toy company for many years. Yeah. So this is the the extreme. Right, now, this is a fun life hack. I still follow them on Twitter. So sometimes I'll be scrolling like, oh, bad news, bad news. Oh, cage for a boner. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, if this ice cream's not going inside me, not mouth-wise. <laughs> Warning. This store is not suitable for children and adults who aren't down to get dirty. It says that. Stop looking at my jokes. Victorians will finally, that's what they call themselves in Victoria. Okay, it would be C. Victorians will finally be able to get a taste of provocative Vancouver-based ice cream store, Perverted Ice Cream, by July 2019. Store owner Suzanne Serwatuk confirmed to Victoria Buzz they will be opening up a new location at 604. It doesn't matter. All the flavors featured in the Vancouver shop, ranging from classic and premium perverted to royally perverted, sure, will be brought What to could that be? Very, very perverted. This, <laughs> Delivering this on the ice cream will go down on you in a theater. <laughs> <laughs> Delivering. <laughs> Delivering on the owner's promise to serve delicious ice cream with a twist. And that twist, it's jizz. <laughs> it's not. It's not jizz. I told you this would be a dirty one. I just think maybe that was a family miscommunication where, like, the grandpa was like, let's open an ice cream store with a twist. And he meant, like, two flavors twisted together. And his pervert son was like, oh, I know exactly oh, yeah. what you mean. Twist and dicks, right? I love it. Whoa, no. Whoa. We just wanted something that was unlike any other ice cream shop out there. Mission accomplished. Perverted is a beautiful word that can mean so much. A sexual meaning is just a tiny bit of that. Oh, oh, so your ice cream is the different kind of perverted. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Hey, everybody. I'm a pervert. That means I like uh, listening to music. Because <laughs> <laughs> it has lots of meanings. <laughs> We're not here to king shame at all. But also, you can't say that the sexual meaning of perverted is just a tiny bit of it, when I would argue it's a good 85%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah this, this one ice cream they have a picture of, um, actually, is a big ice cream uh, in a uh, and with chocolate on it, and it's got a condom shoved into it. Not a joke. Oh, yep. Uh huh. Yeah. So that wow, you are what? definitely going for the sex one on that. Yeah. The perverted is definitely the sex one. Y'all, 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 y'all. News update: the condoms in a wrapper. Yes, thank you. Because <laughs> oh, I... the seductive side of some of your favorite sweet treats, some of which are served with a condom, is one of the toppings. No glove, no love, right? Wrong. I mean, yeah, but... Incorrect. You've used it incorrectly. It's not supposed to refer to a condom shoved into an ice cream treat. No condom, no ice cream is nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> Besides being finger-licking delicious nope. pass, hard pass, <laughs> hard pass... I have never had a press release make me want to wash my hands before. Besides being finger only delicious, this ice cream shop works with a local company that supplies the sugar and other simple base ingredients that staff mix in the store every day with fresh, local, high-fat milk. Oh, sorry, we, that was from a different place. No, this is this, this place. It's perverted, but, like, don't get it twisted. It's still great at it. Shop eight, local, think super horny all the time. They're also known for avoiding fillers. <laughs> for, for what? And chemicals, as much as possible, to create the closest possible natural soft serve. Is that sexy? I literally don't know anymore. I'm, I'm afraid of the caveat as much as possible. We avoid chemical. Oh no, some got in. Well, we do our best. Their cool, quirky ice cream flavors aren't the only things that'll make you scream this summer. Pop some of their... Um, <laughs> no! Pop some of their uh, signature salty balls in your mouth for a delicious surprise. Don't, First don't all, gratify that. No. Don't worry. We're only talking about their soft caramel covered chocolate balls with mold and sea salt. Good job. You made it half a fucking paragraph being cool. Yeah. <laughs> and you had to be bored. Oh, like, don't get it twisted. We're not going to put testicles in your mouth. Well, no fucking duh, ice no cream duh. company. Oh, I thought you meant you were going to place some real human testicles in my mouth. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, thank you for Claire. I was aghast. I'd made it this far in the advertisement, but I was confused by that because I didn't want strangers human testicles in my mouth. But now you've clarified to me that perhaps you meant a confectionery treat. Oh, thank you so much, ice cream store. Fuck you. Perverted, perverted ice cream also sells t-shirts, sweatpants, candles, lip balms, baseball hats, and of course, perverted condoms. So you can rep this new favorite in style. Imagine that scenario. Hey, cool condom, what's it from? <laughs> oh, thank it's, you my, uh, it's from my favorite ice cream that I like. <laughs> and, they, and you got the condom to keep us from having a child or an STD uh, at the ice cream store. <laughs> so let me get it fucking straight. You pulled the condom to protect us sexually from the ice cream that you ate earlier. Good, I'm going home. Goodbye. Wait, wait, don't leave, don't leave. It's a perverted condom. Yeah, I'm actually out. Oh, no. I'm actually done. Who would say, who wants to say that? Let me put on my perverted condom. <laughs> Anyway, that's perverted ice cream. Come to Victoria in July. If you're in the area, check it out. Or don't. Or don't. don't. Or do. Or do. I, I do want to know what the flavor is. Um, do y'all want a Yahoo? Yeah, I really do. Okay, this one was sent in by several people. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, fuck off, that was, you got me. You let me go so fucking far that time. <laughs> What? I want to munch. I want to munch. You want to munch Toronto? I want to munch Toronto. I have a, uh, this is the Munch Squad. It's podcast with a podcast highlighting the latest and greatest in quick service restaurant innovation. Uh, I have a. So you're a, never going to stop doing it. It's right? on its way out. Uh, it's, this is, it's kind of a farewell tour. You say that, uh, but this is, you're like, like Billy Joel, who just keeps Wendy's saying he's is retiring. giving away two million nuggets, guys. Two million nuggets to celebrate the spicy <laughs> return. Can I tell you something real quick? I thought you said Vin Diesel is giving away nuggets. Vin Diesel is giving away two million of his own personal nuggets. <laughs> From August 12th to August 19th, so this is useful, all you have to do is use the DoorDash mobile app, add the six-piece spicy chicken nugget order to your cart, and use the code SPICYNUGS at checkout. Okay. All right. Um, the, just wrote, this is a Munch Squad Junior, really more of a public service announcement that you can do this this week. Uh, he, Carl Laredo, which is fucking good. God, yes. It, it, Yes, he says we knew we needed to reward fans who helped make this possible in a big way. So I took so a break said, from being a space pirate to come down and help you all out. <laughs> we got we got two million likes. Let's give away two million nuggets. That's how it's done at Wendy's. Fuck, but we should have done three million first. likes. Yeah, way more. Okay, but that is a much quad junior public service announcement. The the one I really wanted to well, highlight. I, I really wish that that sentence you started out with had ended to one very lucky boy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is the one I wanted to highlight, and this is one of those, like, a lot of times we're kind of goofing on people, but this is very good. Popeye's is launching a new chicken sandwich that you can't get at Popeye's. Wait. Oh, good. Wait. Okay. So here's the story on this, all right? In 2017, there was this restaurant called Sweet Dixie Kitchen, which is a trendy brunch spot in Long Beach, California. And owner of that, Kim Sanchez, was spotted walking through the front door with Popeye's bags. Oh, right, right, right. And it went viral overnight. People freaked out. And the backlash on social media sparked what was aptly named Popeye's Gate. Hashtag Popeye's Gate. So that doesn't mean anything anymore. The gate thing doesn't mean no, it's done. anything anymore. So what does Popeye's do? Popeye's creates its biggest product launch in 30 years, the Popeye's Chicken Sandwich. And it is launching it at Sweet Dixie Kitchen. Get out from of August the town. Tonight. They are giving it to them first. You can try it there first. That's the best thing I've ever heard. Here is the quote from Kim Sanchez, owner of Sweet Dixie Kitchen. Maybe my favorite quote we've ever done on Munch Squad. 
to be honest, I thought they were calling to sue me. <laughs> <laughs> We have a long history with Popeye's, but we've always said Popeye's chicken is the best fried chicken we ever had. So we are thrilled to collaborate with them to yeah. watch and serve their delicious Popeye's chicken sandwich. Quote, and here's like Bruno, oh, another good one. Bruno Cardinale. He's the head of marketing for North America for the Popeye's brand. Wait, In isn't what, that the guy from West Wing? Yes. Uh, Yes, that is very close to to his name. Uh, uh, and I I assume this quote was delivered as he held a uh, a wrestling belt that he had fashioned for himself <laughs> aloft. We feel honored that the team at Sweet Dixie Kitchen likes our chicken so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to acknowledge their admiration, we are granting them special access to pre-launch our new chicken sandwich for a few days before we <laughs> launch it nationally. If you want to try it, be sure to pay them a visit on August 8th and 9th. We promise our new sandwich is worth a visit. So good. Popeyes, so it's so good. It's That's... by the way, delicious buttermilk battered, ham breaded white meat chicken fillet served on a buttery toasted brioche bun with two barrel cured pickles, <laughs> and then some mayonnaise. This kind of uh, why can't all corporations show this kind of clemency to those yes. who have wronged them? The world yes. will be a much better place. What if ABBA decided uh, to not be mad at us for using their song without permission for several years and instead decided to debut their new single right, right. here on oh my brother, my, my brother. Me. Take another chance on me. <laughs> Take a second chance. Take a second chance. Give it another pass on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Right on. So dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I want to munch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got this is Morbid Jr. Cause it's 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 um Whoo, y'all know the pasta pass, right? Your boy is a two-time pasta pass holder and one-time pasta pass user. <laughs> that is a never-ending pasta pass that keeps you going all summer long. Yeah. One delicious bowl of pasta every day at Olive Garden for as long as the pasta pass lasts. Or as long as and you, you last, keep, because yep, that's a lot of carbohydrates. Well, that's an interesting, uh, interesting you should bring that up, Griffin, because oh, here's no. the deal this year. The uh, 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 the the card, the Never Any Pasta Pass, will be available to twenty four thousand diners for a hundred dollars each. <sighs> but the first fifty guests to complete their online track uh, transaction, mm -hmm. pay an additional four hundred dollars, are going to receive. Oh my God, you guys aren't going to believe this. What? But sign up for this. Starts at 2 p.m. ET, August 15th. Is that today? <gasps> that's right now. That's literally. No, that's not today. That's right that's now. Literally right now. Go, Justin, go. go. go Justin, go. Justin, go. Come with me if you want to eat. Just fucking go, Justin. Stop the bit and go get this fucking card. Right now. Go. Didn't get it this year. It's sold out. Maybe next year. Uh, the pasta pass is a, a pass that you can eat pasta all, all summer long. But this year, the first... 50 people to complete their online transaction, pay an additional $400, got a lifetime pasta pass. That's that's a long time. What if a baby well, what if a baby a buys it? a long time. What if a baby buys it? That's a good point, Griffin. It's ironic because by giving the lifetime pasta pass, it is actually sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy that they'll have to give you less overall because you are someone who is eating olive garden in theory every single day for the rest of your life <laughs> uh -huh. so it will sort of curtail it's a limit i'm saying it's not as they have a thing on their website that says uh, uh if a lifetime pasta pass older holder ate one bowl a day for the next 60 years the line of bowls would stretch longer than 98 leaning towers of pizza the assumption that you have made here, <laughs> this person is, I, here's my two things. One is I eat, I'm going to eat one bowl of Olive Garden every single day. And the second thing is I'm going to live for 60 years. This is the most useless chart anyone has ever created. 
it imagines a fictionalized situation in which you are going to kick it for more than, I mean, a decade at that rate. Yeah. I mean, some it, not great. Uh, Olive Garden, their um, their vice president of marketing, Jennifer Arguello, said it's important to us that our biggest brand fans have been with us through all of their special occasions. With the introduction of the Lifetime Pasta Pass, we're able to continue making memories with them for a lifetime, which could be eight, mm -hmm. nine years tops, she says. Uh, oh, here are the pastas this year, by the way. Uh, we got weekly ones. We got tough got the ones. Ones that look like worms. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But there's a lot of different combos. You can get grilled chicken on there uh, if you want. I beg of you, <laughs> please get some grilled chicken. You can get grilled chicken on there and you can get um, garden veggies. Please, I beg of you, please get the grilled chicken and garden veggies on there at least a few times. Please stay with us, please. When you hear your family, obviously they care about me very much. Uh, if I owned one of these very expensive lifetime pasta passes, if I, out of, if I'm out of state, away from my home OG, and I tragically pass away, are they gonna know and come to like my funeral and be like, oh, we are so sorry, we're so sorry, we're so sorry, we do need that card, and they pull out a big pair of scissors. That is, and they throw it in the casket with you yeah. like a pharaoh. <laughs> they place them over your eyes, the halves of the card. <laughs> The terrifying thing is, actually, one day you'll just be holding your pasta pass, and suddenly in your hand, it will shrivel and blacken, and oh, you know. No. Yeah, it's like the black spot. Yeah, today's the day. <laughs> An expiration date will magically appear on yeah. it, and you know that that ain't the cards. And that's You go into Olive Garden to use it, they're like, we're sorry, sir, this is no longer applicable. At, and you t look around and you're a skeleton. That's when you'll begin the whole seeing time. the pasta man. And only <laughs> you will be able to see him. Uh, is, it, that's, is that what creepy pasta yeah. is? I've been wondering yes, about it. Is that what it is? <laughs> We've got a new selection this year at Olive Garden, creepy pasta. Or as I call it, spooketti. <laughs> what a missed opportunity. <sighs> Not in the oh. first block? What the fuck? Oh my. I want a munch. God. I want to munch. God, I don't know how to follow Ooh, along. Sick voice Justin is so weird in this one. The Munch Squad is a podcast within a podcast. Celebrating the latest and greatest in um, quick service dining. Uh, today, we are going to uh, take a little bit of a pivot. Uh, Heinz ketchup is technically uh, kind of a fast food staple, but this is not a specific fast food item. We've talked about a, different per for a few different permutations of sauces before. Because we know that the Heinz company, I like it to get nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so, you remember purple um, here's ketchup? Who, oh, who, yeah. what, who gave them the fucking rights? We're going to get a little bit wilder than that today. <laughs> this was sent to me by Catherine Bonham. Very good. Thank you, Catherine. And here's the headline, folks. Ed Sheeran's Heinz <laughs> tattoo is now a limited edition ketchup bottle. Again, Wait. again, again. I'll take you one more trip, but it's going to be another nickel. Ed Sheeran's Heinz tattoo is now a limited edition ketchup bottle. Can I squeeze Ed Sheeran's arm and get ketchup yep. out of it? Because <laughs> that's what that sentence means. Sheeran. If you break this sentence down, Fine. literally, <laughs> what it is saying is that Mr. Sheeran got onto Game of Thrones and then made his tattoo have the ability to distribute ketchup <laughs> to the people. That is, of course, not what is happening here. Uh, what is happening here is a limited edition bottle of Heinz tomato ketchup. Boys, I'm going to send you a, a quick picture. Anybody who would like to can uh, find this for themselves. I'm sure it won't, would not be a challenge. Hold on one moment. It will be challenging. Challenging spiritually for you, but not a challenge literally. Here comes the picture of and 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 what's what'll be kind of nice is it's just going to look exactly like you expect it to it's going to be 100 what you are envisioning when i say a 
a ketchup bottle milked from the <laughs> tattoo of Ed Sheeran. Um, what you've got huh. is a bottle oh my God. of Heinz that has Ed Sheeran's skin sort of tattoo. <laughs> kind of skin. Flat. It looks, looks like, like his skin. Kind of his skin. skin. It looks like what now, you expect oh. when you see like the Necronomicon and it's bound in human flesh. It's just this kind of that. his, just kind of his, his arm sleeve tattoo with definitely like pale skin underneath it. This is this is the wildest shit. Yes, Griffin. Yes, that's a good way of putting it. It is the wildest <laughs> shit, and and they didn't make a lot of these, so I I don't. Well, he only has like so much of, flesh. Yeah, he only has. I should mention. <laughs> I should mention also that this this comes in a box that looks like an amplifier, and um, it has a little pick in there. I'm sure Mr. Sheeran approves of. He's a great pick. Uh, but this is Ed Sheeran X Heinz Tomato Ketchup Tattoo Edition. That's l what we're calling this one is Ed Sheeran X Heinz Tomato Ketchup tattoo edition ed sheeran's a huge fan of heinz ketchup there's 150 bottles of this across the world uh signed by ed and they are already uh being lapped up you went in a drawing with a charity donation uh, uh and um you could win them and then i guess sell them on ebay i've seen reports that they've gone as high as 1800 uh bucks Dollars? it's also worth Eighteen hundred dollars for this special. That ketchup. better be some damn good tasting ketchup. Um, it's called Ed Chip. So, they 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 call it Ed Chip. Fuck man, this is dark. <laughs> it's pretty dark. <laughs> this is always an extremely dark segment, but um, it, he got this tattoo in twenty twelve to commemorate a tour. And his and it commemorated the tour and his love of ketchup, and now Heinz is working with with Ed Sheeran. They made a, bo they made a, a bottle out of it. They made a, bottle, made a bottle, out bottle out of his tattoo of. It's, it's just, the most recursive thing yeah. I've ever heard of. He the, got the a tattoo of the label of the Heinz ketchup bottle, and Heinz said, yes. "Ah, cool. We're gonna make a label out of your tattoo of the label." of the Heinz ketchup bottle. And then we're gonna put what looks like skin wrapped around a bottle full of what could be blood. So this is the blood of your skin bottle and we're selling it and we're selling it. I wanna send you guys one more picture and you can also find this picture at home if you wanna play along. We don't use a lot of visual aids on this show, but this is such a challenging story. Um, there's a picture of, of Ed. <laughs> Ed holding up his ketchup oh bottle, God. and clearly it's been photoshopped into his hands because no one knew what the bottle oh was going to look God. like, right? Hundred <laughs> percent. And and I want to I want you to know something, listener. If you don't want to see this picture, and I don't blame you, it's it's fucking <laughs> it's ghoulish, gothic. It is it's <laughs> ghoulish. Ed Sheeran's eyes as he's holding this bottle of the ketchup based on his skin are the blackest things I've ever seen. It's haunting. Coal black eyes, like a doll's eyes. Terrifying, <laughs> empty, bottomless pit, soul. <laughs> Really this is a man who has clearly seen the end of the tunnel. <laughs> like, <laughs> and in the this end, we are all just Ed. ketchup bottles. What's great? Thing... What's great is that you can zoom in all the way on his face, and it crops the the ketchup bottle out of it, but you can still see the top of his hand. So you can play a game where you imagine what he's holding that's making him have that face. And for me, in my mindscape, it's his own tombstone. <laughs> 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 it's the it's a it's an urn containing the ashes of a beloved pet. You Ed she, this is the worst thing I've seen about Ed Sheeran <laughs> in my entire life and I heard him sing a duet with Alexa this week. <laughs> Ed do you need my help, Ed? Are you okay? I will come for you. Ed, Are you doing all right, Ed? You've gone too deep, Ed. Ed. You need, I know this fame thing was really fun in the beginning. You started and you're like, oh, man, this is great. Everybody wants to give me money for my music. How bad could this be? And now your skin is wrapped around a ta like a tomato bottle. Tomato bottle. Ketchup bottle. And you, you probably feel bad. You know, at this point, you probably feel like a mockery of yourself. I can get you out of it. I can make you disappear, Ed. Give me a call. I'll get you out of this, Ed. I owe you for that thing in Boca 
I'll get you out of this. So what's wild is that Ed Sheeran is not someone whose star is falling. Ed Sheeran is at the height of his powers. Yes. This means that when Ed Sheeran was Eddie Sheeran, sitting on his grandfather's lap around the piano, his grandfather said, you know, Ed, if you keep playing this way, you'll get to be a big star. And Eddie said, yeah, Grandpa. And his grandpa said, what will you do with that incredible power and fortune? And Eddie said, put my fucking skin on a ketchup <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Make me a bottle. <laughs> Look it. And then his, and then his grandfather had a heart attack sitting right there. But you know what? I do respect it. That is an inc incredible abuse of your power. Mm -hmm. And I do respect <laughs> I do respect it. Yes. Now, if someone asked me right now, would you guys do a my brother, my brother, and me theme ketchup bottle? The answer would be fuck yes. Like fuck yes, we would. Yes. Obviously. Well, this is yes. let's let's divide and conquer here. If you had to have your flesh on the bottle of a product, which uh -huh. product would you choose to have your flesh on? Hmm. Probably skin lotion. Oh, that's no. Good. Is it a sauce? Is that what we have? I mean, to it can be whatever, man. Whatever is a container. I think it has to be a sauce. I'm going to narrow it to a oh, sauce. Okay. Your question's too broad. Well, if you think about it, sauce. lotion is like human sauce. Yeah. No, it's like okay. a human marinade. That's nothing, but I'll allow it because I'm not that interested to hear what else you have. Griffin, sauce. I'm going to say, uh, no, come back to me. Cholula, chili, lime. Um, Can I go again? Yeah, you can have one more chance, but don't say Cholula chili garlic. Damn it. I'm taking the enchi entire Cholula hot sauce line. I'm going to take some malt vinegar. I like to put that shit on my fish and chips, gov. <laughs> <laughs> you continental bastard. <laughs> Griffin, sauce me, baby. I'm going to say an old bottle <laughs> of Marmite. That you don't want to eat, like you. Nobody wants. To, even if you like Marmite, this bottle's so old, you're not gonna go near it. And then that way, you don't have to interact with my flesh bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that for you. Did you guys know that the fact that this exists and I can't buy it is the worst crime <laughs> on earth? <laughs> Did you know that? I suspect it as true. much. Yeah. All right, if I'm ever gonna afford a bottle of this stuff, then we've gotta, we have got to head on over to the money zone. We have to head to several money zones if you're gonna buy one of these in the, <laughs> the black market. Fair, yeah. What is that? Toronto! I want a munch. Squad. Do, 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 do. I want a munch. Squad. Squad. I'm getting a little jazzier with it these okay. days. Da, 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 da. This is uh, Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. Kind of winding this one down. This particular bit. Uh, you is say in that and then you do phase. it every week. It's Well, it's, it's still, you know, it still comes out of retirement from time to time. Um, it's sort of in a pre-retirement phase. Then it'll pop back in out of retirement. But... Um, this is just a good old fashioned press release. And the item is not that strange. And I know it's normally at the, the heart of the Munch Squad, but this press release was just so darn earnest. I, uh, I, I couldn't not share it with y'all. Um, and I also think that if you aren't aware of the brand we're talking about, um, it is possibly the most insane collection of words to ever form a headline in recorded history that if you did not know the source of this information you would be literally unable to parse this information i'm going to put this in the skype window without any of the other information and uh griffin if you could just read it for me please. sure i would love to <laughs> I, I oh my god this is like razzle dazzle like i'm trying to read it yeah, your right your pie launches baked pasta nationwide so my pie uh -huh. has gained sentience and it's blasting baked pasta what? all across this great country congratulations that is one guess. interpretation yeah your pie is a chain that lets you make a pizza pie a uh, very fast and it's a quick service pizza offering that you can get into so but there now they're getting in the baked pasta game Build your own pizza brand. Your pie has added a big pasta to the menu. It's more than 65 locations nationwide. The new menu features classic pasta offerings like Zia's meatball marinara and cheesy Alfredo. 
as well as fan favorite items, blah, blah, blah. Quote, this one's from the president, Drew French. As the world's first fast casual pizza franchise, innovation has always been part of the Your Pie DNA. More than 10 years later, we've never stopped challenging ourselves to improve, invent, and evolve. We developed our pasta menu in response to guest and store feedback, and we look forward to seeing how it amplifies the Your Pie experience. <laughs> Huh. both in stores and within our catering offerings. So I want to dig into one thing that they said is based on guests and store feedback. So basically this person is in your pizza restaurant and they're eating their, their fast casual pie. And they say, I wish this was spaghetti. <laughs> hey, Hello? One Can piece of feedback. A manager? Can you get a manager for me? Someone high up enough that they could get this feedback back to corporate. But I wish this pizza was spaghetti. Listen, I don't know how to say this to you because it's going to seem like it's coming out of nowhere. Um, I'm enjoying this pizza that I requested all the individual pieces of. But is there a way, is there a universe in which instead of being pizza, it was baked pasta? Then I think it would be perfect. <laughs> I wish you would let um, me drive a pasta car in the same way that I'm driving this pizza here. We're This is a quote from Pat Landon, who's a franchise owner in Augusta, Georgia. We're excited to offer guests yet another fresh, great tasting menu option. As one of the first Your Pie groups to begin carrying pasta, we got to see firsthand our guests' excitement at having a new Ooh, build daddy. your own experience. Daddy, look <laughs> it! Just like I requested, Daddy! It's here, it's here! The Yard Pie is doing pasta now, just like we asked for! You guys wanna hear the saddest sentence in the English language? Yes. Yep. My wife and I have had a lot of fun crafting our own custom pasta creations. Oh, goodness. Like spicy buffalo chicken, oh, chicken cordon bleu, <laughs> and veggie extravaganza. <laughs> Finally, the romance is back. <laughs> We're making love like never before. <laughs> We're making love in pasta. <laughs> This veg. Hey, hey, Carol, are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> yeah, Dan, that was fucking fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it two more times. That was so fucking fun when you put the spaghetti sauce on there with all the spaghetti and shit. It was so fucking fun. <laughs> no one else could have thought of chicken cord on blue uh, pasta, Dan. You've done it again. Now. Come <laughs> over and kiss me, you animal. That fucking veggie <laughs> bonanza got my dick rock hard. <laughs> Let's get home to our marital bed. <laughs> Here's the great thing. They're crafting these custom pasta creations. So this is his name for them. He came up with these names because they're his custom creations. So he ate this and he said, you know what, Carol? I'm going to call this one veggie extravaganza. She said, you fucking animal. Take me right now. <laughs> That's such a funny fucking name, dude. Is it because of all the vegetables? <laughs> yes, Carol, that's right. <laughs> Caught me. That's exactly why I called it that. I love you more now than when I met you over a pizza that we made together. <laughs> Only now do I see the true you deep in the pasta. <laughs> so the... Spicy buffalo chicken, chicken corn, blue and veggie trafficking. At your pie, it's about everyone getting to enjoy exactly what they want with no need to compromise <laughs> or sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, you'll never need to sacrifice. It. We won't judge you for any of your dark pasta desires here. All are welcome. Our new pasta offering supports that experience. Human flesh. Plus, it's perfect for catering. <laughs> How could you do catering? A bulk order that matches everyone's pasta desires. Infinite catering. At your, This is one last quote from French. At your pie, we believe that food can be fresh, fast, delicious, and experiential. Ooh. We want to be the go-to fast casual restaurant where families, friends, colleagues, and groups who we have to assume are neither friends, family, or <laughs> colleagues, just, just gatherings, random samplings of humans can gather, dine, and create shareable moments. Where when we began this journey, we offered guests a new way to experience pizza. 
<laughs> great, great. Now we're excited to introduce a new way to experience your pie. You know, traditional oven baked pasta like Italy has never done. <laughs> In 60 seconds, like Italy does. <laughs> oh, goodness. A bunch squad, even though we've only done one question. <laughs> one All right, well, never mind. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Go, no, 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 I'm not going to no, take no. it, Justin. I would never take it. You already did. No, you already did. Travis, I was simply Travis, making an observation. Hold on. Travis, Travis, just wait. Hey, I'm going to do a Yahoo now. <laughs> I want a mud squad. I'm the scat man. Ooh. Uh, the, uh, squad. Uh, so this is a mud squad. It's a podcast within a podcast about the latest and greatest. I think you just service. said it's the scat man squad. <laughs> the scat squad, uh, which is not that far off for a lot of these innovations. Do you know um, they tried to launch a solo career for DJ Scat Cat? Uh, yeah, I saw you doing a little deep dive on that via to Twitter. To the point where during that tour that Paula Abdul did, they had someone in an MC Scat Cat costume come out and perform that song sure. with her, and it was the most confusing thing any human being has ever seen with their eyes. I mean, nothing, okay. nothing confusing about that. It's just a man in a furry costume doing MC Scat Cat parts. It's not that confusing. I don't know why we, why I get static for this, but you get to talk about MC Scat Cat for 30 minutes. That's fair. And, and I did I did mislabel him as DJ Scat Cat, <laughs> too, which yeah, look, he tried that for a while, and it didn't work out. Look at your watches, folks. It may not have felt like 30 minutes just passed. 30 minutes just passed. <laughs> Did you guys know Tim Ear did a DJ set here last weekend? Stop, you yeah, fucking out. can't. D yes, our news anchor Tim Ear did a DJ set here. No fear, Tim Ear, as I call him, because he has no fear. He said it in a in a magazine interview. They said, "What are you most afraid of?" And Tim Ear said, "I'm not afraid of anything." <laughs> <laughs> that rules. I fucking fucking love Tim Ear. Anyway, did a DJ set last weekend. Didn't make it. Got kids. Regret it. Now, regret having children because I missed the Demir DJ set. I have two. They are both short. Here's the first one. Oh, KFC testing kids. hot. KFC <laughs> testing hot and fresh chicken and donuts. What? Starting September 16th, oh my God. KFC will test, test Kentucky Fried Chicken and Donuts for a limited time only in Norfolk, Richmond, Virginia, and boys. Pittsburgh. <gasps> oh. That's right. We're going. We're going to be there. We're going. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken and Donuts brings two All-American classics together. Did you guess what they are yet? With a pairing of KFC's world famous chicken, last chance to guess, coupled with a fresh glazed donut. So you're going to have a variety of options for ways to fuck yourself up on this one. Here's three different ways you can fuck things up. Okay, uh -huh. three different mistakes that are offered here. Uh, there's the chick conduct KFC and donut basket meal. The option includes chicken on the bone or two chicken tenders paired with one donut for five forty nine. Okay, just like that in the also same available. Basket, just like grab touching? whatever's around. It's also available as a big basket meal with two donuts for seven forty nine. Okay, I'll take the big basket. <laughs> With two donuts in my lunch. KFC chicken and donut sandwich. Now, this is a juicy, hand-breaded, extra crispy chicken filet sandwich between two fully glazed donuts. Now, it specifies oh fully glazed as if this is a <laughs> concern for people. These <laughs> hey. sloppy fucking fall-off-the-bone, ruined-ass wet donuts. A full glaze. Um, a hand-breaded... Uh, extra crispy chicken filet between two fully glazed donuts. It's also available as a combo meal. Now, I don't know if you can get that with the donut on the side. Want just the sweet treat? No problem. Guests can add a donut to any meal huh. for just $1. So it's almost um, like there's no rules or regulations here. They just accidentally ordered some donuts that they're trying to get rid of. Yes, they're just, you could just give us a dollar and we'll put a donut on top Listen, of it. Listen, we ordered too many donuts. We sent Jeff out for donuts 
and we meant for the office, and he thought we meant for every store, and he came back with 200,000 donuts. Please buy these donuts. So these are, um, these are a, uh, a thing uh, that will only be in Norfolk uh, slash Richmond, Virginia, and Pittsburgh. Uh, it, it says here in the press release, the chicken and donuts trend has been gaining popularity, but mostly on a local level in areas like Philadelphia, San Diego, and Portland. <laughs> Sounds like you fucked up. Huh? <laughs> I would have done it there, but what the fuck do I know? <laughs> Were people like it already? I don't know. The last paragraph of this fucking monstrosity. Co- consumers are increasingly seeking novel, craveable flavor combinations that give them the best of both sweet and savory worlds to create a unique taste experience. Through this test market, KFC is evaluating consumer appetite for bringing this growing food trend to its customers on a national scale. You cannot act like a pioneer when your big idea is donuts with it. Like, what if we put donut? Do you like fried chicken? Well, yeah. What if we put some donuts with it? I, I, yeah, okay. okay. I mean, you I was already going to get the fried chicken, so I guess if the I won't throw the donuts away, if that's what you mean. We, we got to move on to this other one, and it's Pizza Hut launches first of its kind stuffed cheese at pizza. Wait. Fucking. It's a, if you could fucking see this thing, it's the size of um a pizzone. <laughs> that's not a good reference point, but it's the size of a handkerchief. And it's oh, cheese. Oh, it. for fuck's sake, Justin! What? what? I just looked at it with my own, my only eyes. It's just, it looks like a cheese it, but it's stuffed with <gasps> mozzarella cheese, and you can dip it in there. Huh. Yeah, each crispy square is stuffed in Pizza Hut style. Has enough cheese to either. kill one man. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed lethal dose of cheese. <laughs> In every square, you can stuff it with either cheese or pepperoni and cheese and serve it up with a slice of uh, the side of marinara dipping sauce. I'm assuming eventually it will have to be all the toppings because this will be the only pizza available uh, here in the next few months. Um, we pride our... Okay, oh my God. You have pride? <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Marion Radley who's always... She's the chief brand officer for Pizza Hut and my adopted she, grandma. She... <laughs> she <laughs> She says, we pride ourselves on being the go-to for unexpected pizza innovations. And I can't think of a more badass partner than Cheez-It. She says badass? <laughs> a more badass partner than Cheez-It <laughs> this to bring our next original. delicious. <laughs> what did her nephew tell her badass meant? Because the fact that you think Cheez-It is the most of it is a wild jump for me. Not to mention, as fellow NCAA partners, this collab is the perfect way to kick off football season, Woo! combining America's go-to game day cravings in one next level snack. That's the fucking, that should actually be the symphony swells behind me, comes to a crescendo blackout, end of munch squad level paragraph. That should be, that would be what I should go out on. Um, the partnership was born from more than just a fun idea. You fucking maniacs. You don't have to tell me how you cooked up the idea of doing a cheese at pizza because you think we're all dirt bats and you hate our fucking guts. It's not rocket science. Also, not only are cheese a hut or cheese a hut is pizza. nothing. Pizza is very good. Not only are customers craving these kinds of mashups between beloved food brands, because <laughs> they more nasty. And more. Because they nasty and we hate them. Cheese it is a popular snack amongst Pizza Hut's largest fan bases. The <laughs> sentence could end in so many different ways, <laughs> ranging from brutally, savagely <laughs> honest to, to, to pleasant. And it's college students. Mm. All right. You could have said college dirtbags, but I think college students is as close as we're going to get. Armed with that insight, the Pizza Hut culinary dream team worked with Cheez-It to create a product that ties the best of both pizza and Cheez-It worlds into one new innovation. Fucking words mean things. Words mean things. And no one is, is is degrading that concept more than Wendy Davidson, who's the president of Kellogg's U.S. Specialty Channels. <sighs> the words in this, okay, 
Kellogg's iconic Cheez-It brand brings a whole new dining experience to Pizza Hut lovers and will not disappoint. The stuffed Cheez-It pizza is an example of two great companies leveraging their strength to delight guests with a new experience on a classic favorite. A new experience on a classic favorite is fucking nothing. I literally think at this point, AI is writing. I think that's the only thing that makes sense. This cannot be a human being anymore, right? This is AI. These people are all AIs, right? The singularity is backing into, it's not going to be one day the robots just crane their necks over and be like, all humans fuck off. It's this. They're just going to like slowly supplant people and we will have no idea. Well, and also they kill us with Cheez-It food. They kill they kill yeah. our organic form because their robot forms aren't gonna touch this shit. Right. Oh no 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 they will keep humans employed so they don't have to sully their various cogs right. and 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 uh 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 mechanizations with this this sort of garbage. Uh, these both look pretty good. I will definitely <laughs> eat both of them with my human body. Let there let there be no pretense. I will be enjoying both of these when my cheat day rolls around. Sure. Um, when you cheat, and... when you cheat on God, yeah. When you cheat, death. <laughs> right? <laughs> when I cheat ethics and morality, uh, yeah. Okay, I got another question for you. <laughs> Two in a row? That wasn't me. It's not me. All? <laughs> I want to munch. I want too much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is tour manager Paul breaking in with an unprecedented yeah. Munch Squad special update edition. I'm so glad uh, they're here. Go ahead, Paul. If you could just. A podcast within a podcast nestled within another podcast. Right. (laughs) Uh, Many of you are aware, as has been noted on a previous edition of Munch Squad, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken's entree (laughs) into the chicken sandwich ongoing wars of 2019 with the Kentucky Fried Chicken and Donut Sandwich. That, of course, being... Did you bring us these sandwiches, Paul? Well, KFC had been test marketing these sandwiches in three cities across America. Norfolk, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, and Pittsburgh, PA! I... Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, is that pride? This is not an exaggeration. I can smell them. I can smell them I now. I can smell them literally for here. Come on, Paul. Come on. It was, it was strongly suggested to me, meaning Justin threatened to fire me if I didn't bring you guys some sandwiches. Yes. Oh, it's so heavy. Okay, when I talked to Paul about this, this was such a better idea when, A, they were hot. <laughs> B, I wasn't talking for it professionally. So this is the sandwich. See, we hadn't just eaten dinner backstage. This is the sandwich. Oh, it's, it's two, I thought it would at least be one donut cut in half. It's two whole donuts, fam. Yeah. There is... I'm s- upset by how dry the donut... It looks like a bagel. I want to warn you guys, there's a sauce, and I can't fathom why that would be the case. Um, and we will you, not eat into the microphone because we love you. Yeah, you're so. not going to simulate what it's like for me every time we sit down to record a podcast. <laughs> oh, God. Why is it gooshing out the bottom? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, There's no! a lot of squid gizm down here. Oh, my God. I don't want to do this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, audience, would you count down from three, please? Three, two, one. No, 
one? Yeah, I'm not going to take a second fucking bite. Uh, that's all I can do. Um, my instant reaction is, how did they fuck that up? It's two donuts and a chicken waffle, and it is like eating a sand dune. Th- that is by far the blandest donut. The a donut! It's a donut, Colonel! And it has no flavor to it. All of the flavor seeped up the bottom. Like, Paul, the, do you like bite? the sugar was trying to escape. You want to buy, Paul? I, uh, I, I, sorry, I, I probably should have mentioned, so I buried the lead a little bit. Um, they had a special deal running. When you buy three, you get 97 more. <laughs> Wait, hold on, wait, hold on. They may just be empty boxes. Would anybody like one? Much as I would love to see you guys eat 100 of these, these are going to be out by the merch table immediately following the show. They will be free with purchase or without purchase. Just get them the fuck out of this building. Thank, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Amanda. We did not really get Justin's take on it. No, keep it there. I want to yeah, remember. No, it's funnier in concept. Paul, I am going to need more white wine, my dude. I assume that's obvious. You're also fired. But if <laughs> you could bring the white wine first, that would be, um, uh, that would be great. I was, I was honestly really excited about it. I was kind of, too. I was kind of a little bit. Thank you, Paul. What was your review, Justin? You didn't tell us. You're the fucking Munch God Squad captain. Uh, Munch God. Uh, yeah. You're the Munch God. Thank you. In short, not delicious. Not good. It feels, I've dulled the receptors that say, like, not food, not food. <laughs> right. But it actually triggered them with this. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is very reserved. Oh, shit. It's the Brooklyn Nine-Nine I want to munch. I want to munch. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. All about the latest and greatest in brand eating. Hey, everyone, three days ago, Justin had no voice. Yes, this is remarkable. And you just killed that. Yeah, it's a miracle. You. Thank you. I want to, this is a Munch Quad Junior. I just like literally have to tell you, because if a bunch of people see it, they're going to send it to me. But Fat Burger is doing a cranberry turkey burger shake. I just want to say this out loud so I can say it. The delectable, customizable cranberry turkey burger will be served with cranberry jelly, cranberry mayo, lettuce, pickles, and onions. Imagine my relief to hear it is customizable. I'd like none of that and none of the ingredients and vanilla, please. Thank you. I'd like you to put a cup in a garbage can. Um, some human being thought that's not yeah that's not what I want to talk I'm not going to talk about okay. it I just want to get it off my chest Taco Bell's Steal a Base Steal a Taco is back and with more on the line hold do on do you know about this promotion? if it's it's a thing in the World Series where you, you well you I mean then it's right there in the name um, so, okay, for the seventh year in a row, Taco Bell is giving fans across the country another reason to get excited for the World Series, free tacos. But this year, Taco Bell is raising the stakes again. By teaming up with BetMGM, operated by Royal Digital, BetMGM will offer sports and taco fans alike the chance to... <laughs> the chance to wager real money on what player they think will steal the first base of the World Series. Wait! Wait, this is not an innovation. That's called gambling. (laughs) It's an honor that Taco Bell has dubbed the Taco Hero. Oh, my God. When it comes to the World Series, rooting for that first stolen base and rejoicing for free tacos has really become the part (laughs) of the game within the game. So teaming up with BetMGM to give fans a whole new way to participate... (laughs) And that in Steal a Base, Steal a Taco. Steal your money. Steal a Future. Yeah. 
felt like a natural extension for us. That's from Will Bortz, Director of Brand Partnerships and Sponsorships <laughs> oh at Taco Bell. God. I can't say I disagree with Will. It I mean, does it's seem a like a natural yeah. extension. We can't wait to see fans engage with the program like never before. No da- shit. Damn, Will. That's bleak, dude. <laughs> and of course, we're excited to see if their predictions come true. Not that you, you know, give a shit, because you do make actual money when they get it wrong. Fans looking to test their luck this October can participate at MGM Resorts in Nevada, Mississippi, and New Jersey, or download the... Well... Yo, no, chill the fuck out. You're clapping for this? They're not good, for this. Hey, folks, they're good states, but wait for us to talk well, about one of yeah, the more right. virtuous aspects. Later, we'll say something neutral about all those states, and then you can yeah. applaud. Bet MGM odds makers will use historical data and their odds making process to post real odds, which will be updated as the postseason progresses. But win or lose, everyone's a winner when free tacos are being offered. Holy shit. I would actually argue, in this case, some people will lose. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, well, my kids can't go to college, but this taco was free and delicious. Unless no, I, no, 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 no. The only oh. way, the only way that statement holds true is if you bet a thousand dollars and there are a thousand and one stolen bases. Because then you it get a thousand and one free tacos. It doesn't, doesn't work like, like that. Like that. Sure. The fir- the taco hero steals the taco base. Everyone get free taco. <laughs> right. That's the that's oh, the promotion. Yeah. You know what would be a Just, fun promotion that they should do? What's well, that, Traff? Um, not not ruin people financially. Yes, that for that sure. That would be fun. They should do a thing where every baseball player who steals a base in the postseason, they make them eat that number of tacos <laughs> during the game. So steal a base, eat a taco right away. You yeah. can't. How about this? You can't steal the base unless you've consumed the entirety of the taco yes. yeah. before you get there. And you can't start until you start running. Okay, I like that. Well, uh, that sucks. Yeah, that one sucks. That's some bleak cyberpunk future shit. Again, I guess I should have, in hindsight, I do wish I had clothes with the cranberry turkey burger milkshake. That is on me, lesson for next time. We're all growing. Do not applaud for sad libs. It was only four minutes long. Now, the problem is that when you... (laughs) I notice a difference in reactions. The problem is... I want a munch doll. I want a munch doll. Welcome to Haunted Munch Squad. I did it, folks. Into the unknown. I crossed the streams and found a Haunted Munch Squad. And here's my new segment, Riddle Me Sad. Yeah. It's a little bit, it's a little bit late, not quite timely, but I wanted to save it for you. I saw this a couple weeks ago and I thought, Orlando deserves this. <laughs> Burger King unveils the ghost whopper for Halloween. <laughs> if you unveil a ghost, what is it? What's under there? Oh no, skeletons under there the whole time. The Burger King brand has pulled off every taste on earth. Whoa! Jesus Christ! Wait! They mixed all Wait, the ingredients. Have they? They mixed all the ingredients into one burger. Hamburger, chicken fries, shit. <laughs> We're out. Burger King, every taste on earth. Tree, dirt, worms, all of them. Clouds. <laughs> this Halloween, they did one that's out of this world. The brand gave its new Ghost Whopper sandwich, uh, made with spe- made with spectral white buns. <laughs> they gave the Ghost Whopper sandwich, made with spectral white buns, to spirits. Ghosts aren't out of this world. The bur- that is not a good turn of phrase for this Earth. Shh. Maybe they gave them the, the Burger King brand partnered with Riz Mirsa 
a trans channel of international renown who can turn his body into a vessel for spirits. Holy fucking shit. The Burger King brand did this? <laughs> See, all of Burger King got together and they're like, this is oh, this dope. Is trans channel for uh, spirits? Of course, yeah, give him a fucking ghost whopper. What do we care? 2019, we ain't got that much <laughs> more time anyway. Together, they conducted the spirit taste test in front of participating guests so the authenticity of this unusual experiment could be verified. This is like... Whoa! <laughs> fucking just let... That's one paragraph, guys. We got a lot of show to get through. <laughs> Mirza incorporated spirits from the location where the spirit taste test took place, the Alexandria Hotel. Infamous for its phantom wing, which was created when an entire section of the building was bricked off in the 1930s after several paranormal sightings. The Full of people. <laughs> the Alexandria Hotel was the perfect place to connect with the spirits. After all, it's a location with a, quote, very energetic imprint from the souls who died there, according to Mirza. This is a fucking burger restaurant. <laughs> when the master medium invited the haunted hotel spirits into his body, the souls from the other side of the veil were able to taste the 100% flame grilled beef and freshly cut tomatoes and the onion in the Ghost Whopper sandwich. In the brief moments they were on Earth, the spirits gave their own review. This, I'm, this, I, I'm in touch with your granddad. Um, he hates it. This, this one act has added several months to the lifespan of capitalism. <laughs> like, capitalism was gonna fall apart, like, August 2021, and now, like, it's this one act is like, it's gonna be August 2021, I'll be like, let's fucking shut it all down. But wait, Burger King did invite spirits to exist inside of a person so they could eat a special ghost whopper. I, can I say something? And some to taste it, to be like, that's a ghost burger, all right? Can I say something? I just told you guys they gave this hamburger to Ghost to review, and I was about to say the reviews the Ghost gave the hamburger, <laughs> and you guys are like, let me get on in this real quick. Let me say a few things. How about I tell you what the Ghost the said about the hamburger? <laughs> I'm in endless torture. It's beyond belief to experience this taste, said one of the spirits. No! Another one affirmed, it's filth. <laughs> Another one wait, affirmed, it's wait, filth. That is the most honest reporting I have ever seen in my entire life. Someone at Burger King was like, do we have to include that in the press release? It's like, if I get, it's about ethics in burger journalism. Listen, we have to. That's what the ghost said. If you were sitting in a room and you're like, this is the, we've done a lot of just really bad PR stunt bullshit in the past. This is the worst thing we've ever done. And you hear a voice clear as day say, it's filth. It's like, we have to, a ghost just talked. We have to use that. Others. That's also got to be a moment where it's like, are you sure the connection is strong? Could you maybe ask, others, I don't know, like uh, Elizabeth Taylor again, what she thought. Is she dead? Yeah, who knows? The, okay. uh, others just didn't know what they were holding in their hands because they've never seen a burger in their lifetime. <laughs> Fucking fair. Okay. I will say this. If they can't piece together bread with meat inside, I'm glad they're dead. <laughs> what is this? What do you think it is? It's a fucking, they had sandwiches, right? Damn. Ghost Whopper sandwich is, uh, is a quarter pound of savory fl flame grilled beef topped with juicy tomatoes. For, I don't have to read the ingredients. It's a burger. Yeah. And so what did the, um, the guests who were there have to say about all this? It was interesting to see what we could learn from the spirits. These are tangible of, people. These are the these tangible things. humans. It was interesting to see what we could learn from the spirits, said one of the participating guests. It's all bullshit, a skeptic in the group added. <laughs> yep. This is the greatest I article I have I ever heard. It's all bullshit, a Fuck skeptic you, in the group added. King said one man. Do not, do, <laughs> folks, no spoilers. Do not talk over this next sentence. <laughs> It's all bullshit, a skeptic in the group added. However, however, whether we believe the medium truly helped the Burger King brand feed a sandwich to spirits or not, at least we know someone or something approved the taste of the Ghost Whopper sandwich. <laughs> so anyway, that's the Munch Squad.
Um, but that also was... along those lo that logic, someone said it's filth. So also someone or something didn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just uh, also before we move on to audience questions, a uh, real quick update. I'm up to 224 reactions to my post <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, and you'll all be happy to hear that our Uncle Chris has already commented, yeah, whatever, I'm not falling for this one. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, fuck! Love that, God, dude. Uncle Chris is the best Love on that, Earth. Love that, dude. Fuck. Zing. Oh, man. So if you don't know the context behind this, what do you think of my Uncle Chris reading that? Like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Justin's trying to open up, Uncle Chris. Damn. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. Oh, my God. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Yes. <laughs> oh. oh, fuck me, I guess. <laughs> I want a munch. <laughs> You guys aren't really giving me much heat. Griffin you, was all disappointed. You came in low. Uh, well, well if I'm you so say I want a munch, season. I'm not going to jump up eight octaves. I just yeah. meant Griffin was like, fuck me, I guess. Well, I started doing it. It still I came hurts in to get interrupted. Okay, so do you want a munch? Yeah, wow. I do. I want a munch. Squad. But I want to munch. Squad. G -g 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 Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. Uh, about the latest and greatest in quick service dining. Uh, quick um, meatless update. Ooh. Meatless bim bam. Meatless Monday. Meatless munch. Meatless munch. There it is. Quick meatless munch update. The newest uh, meatless product. Four River Smokehouse debuts uh, Beyond Burnt Ends. Huh. This is a, a burnt end sandwich that is meatless. That just seems... It seems like there's a lot of other meats we should try to get through These, before we move on to burnt in sandwiches. I would say more, listen, I like burnt ends. Don't get me wrong, but it is one of the least appetizing names for a thing ever. It yeah. makes it sound like, hey, yeah. here are the ruined <laughs> bits. Like, I'll take them. Oh, really? You want the ruined bits? Like, yeah. Oh, I love the ruined bits. We've scientifically replicated ruined bits. That's wild. What's wrong with us? Anyway, that's not the Munch Club, though. Okay. This week, we're going to talk about Yogurt Land. Yes, which I don't finally. know that we've talked. I don't know we've talked about Yogurt Land I, before. I'm, we got to have talked <laughs> about Yogurt Land. They are brave pioneers. They got 300 locations across the U.S. I said across. I heard. They got 300 locations across the U.S., Australia, Dubai, Guam, Indonesia, Myanmar, Oman, Singapore, and Thailand. The holidays are here, and Yogurtland is rewarding fans with a new promotional flavor and topping beginning December 2nd. Yogurtland is spicing things up with, I will give each of you a couple guesses. Oh, my God. Uh, I will tell you this. It is a, it is a manufactured product. Okay. Spicing things spicing up with candy cane? Sriracha? No, and no. Like, Takis? No, it's Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Oh, fuck, that was oh the other get one. out. Available this holiday season for a limited time only, thank fuck. It pairs perfectly with a variety of Yogurtland's frozen yogurt and light ice cream flavors. With a variety of them. <sighs> this year, we're... In this year, we've introduced our fans to a variety of new toppings and flavors, and Cheetos Flamin' Hot Topping is by far the most unique. It, yeah, oh, but they, that's not a synonym for good. Yeah, have, what if they, what, why is it Flamin' Hot Topping? Why is it not just Flamin'? Is it, have they done something to the Cheeto to make it more... I don't know, digestible. Hey, boo, it's flaming hot Cheetos that they're putting on yogurt. Okay, that's but also it. that's in the whole yogurt? fucking bit. We're excited. Uh, they say we know our fans are headed. This is, um, by the way, um, I don't know, some drone. Uh, <laughs> we know our fans are headed into this holiday season ready to spice things up. The fucking fiction that you're trying to sell me on is that your fans of Yogurt Land are headed in there ready to put some fucking flaming hot Cheetos on their ice cream. Are you fucking around with me? Hey, Justin, can I ask you a question? You're, you're, I would say, both the most educated on QSR trends, like person mm -hmm. I know, and maybe that exists on the planet. Who yeah. 
is to blame for this. Like, if you had to track, because here's the thing, Yogurtland did not all on their own direct, one day wake up direct. and say, we have to put Flaming Hot Cheetos on our yogurt. They had it to have seen direct, some kind of trend developing that forced their hand. It is a direct fucking line. Do you want to know where it all starts? Yes. For me? Yes. It's a direct line to the double down. Yep. Huh. It all comes back to the double down. The first time that KFC made a sandwich where the bread was fried chicken and the innards were bacon, that was their bold way of proclaiming, we've got a great new sandwich for three ninety nine, and also God is dead. Okay. KFC started the downfall of everything the with the downfall. double down. They threw some fire, some some fuel to the fire with the fucking famous bowls, and I think that Taco Bell has a considerable amount of blame yeah. with the Doritos taco. If I, if I, I think if I that may, that's a huge. I also think McDonald's when they were like, um, uh, "Hey guys, uh, is pizza anything?" And I think that KFC, <laughs> I think the Colonel probably looked at that like, "Wait, hold up, we don't just have to stay in our lane; like we can get nasty." Yeah, but Griffin, huh? I would order that pizza is something. Pizza is something. Flaming hot Cheetos on top of yogurt is nothing. That okay. is not. That is nothing. If if Yogurt Land said we're now going to do pizza too, I would be like, oh, expanding, as opposed to saying, and now we're just going to ruin some yogurt somebody was looking forward to eating. You have to eat these Cheetos on top of a Yogurt Land yogurt to save the world from the big asteroid, <laughs> which. Yeah flavor do you pair it with vanilla i was thinking vanilla right because now i'm thinking of how the powder would look as it gets mixed in there and i don't hate it because i'm a fucking toilet but i also um, the thing is it's like any any flavor that i love like i love yeah. like cheesecake flavor no like that's ruined now <sighs> i like mint chocolate I'm chip no that's ruined now but okay but i'm thinking of a sort of citrusy flavor right like something with a little bit something with a more acidic Ugh, maybe a dark chocolate that's fucking stomach turning dark chocolate also available a for a limited and, time ooh, dark chocolate might be good. yogurt lands new molasses if someone tried to ginger, give me dark chocolate dipped flame and hot cheetos my microphone's muted hold on let me try to fix my microphone it's muted also available for a limited time yogurt lands new molasses gingerbread cookie frozen yogurt flavor is giving holiday fanatics a little spice with every spoonful the new flavor tastes like a chewy molasses cookie in this part fucking the new flavor tastes like a chewy molasses cookie straight from the oven huh it's not by definition <laughs> i mean by fucking definition it's it's fucking frozen yogurt. It does not taste fresh. It could be anything. The one thing is incapable of tasting like right. is that it is fresh from the oven. Now, okay. some Cheetos on this would not be the the pits. I feel it would be the pits, but it wouldn't be the worst imaginable combo because you do get. I'd that. be able to choke some of it. Yeah, down. cinnamon spice, so very nice. Mouth is cold. Chester's here to help me out with that, with his hot heat. Hey, guys, I like offhandedly Except said chocolate dipped flaming Hot Cheetos, and now I'm afraid I've made that happen, and I want them. Right? Separating Yogurt Land from competitors. Oh, I'm sorry. I think my company's... microphone is muted. Hold on. <laughs> guys, I, let me check. Okay. You probably didn't hear me. I said some dark chocolate dipped flaming Hot Cheetos. No, I don't think that would be good. Separating Yogurt Land from competitors is the company's team of flavorologists who've developed more than 200 different craveable flavors. Okay. Whether traditional or exotic, each recipe uses real ingredients from across the globe. I want to break this down a little bit because you hear a lot of mealy-mouthed sort of half-truths in, in these things, and I do want to stop and, and take a pull over the car and look at each recipe uses real ingredients from across the globe. The inverse of that statement, mm -hmm. were it not true, would be that Yogurt Land uses imaginary ingredients from across <laughs> the globe. Yes. That you do not have to tell that the, that the ingredients are, here's the one thing we'll say about them, they're extant, and they are present on this they globe. They cast shadows. 
They're real, true ingredients. Um, challenging stuff, Juice. Challenging stuff. Yeah, I let me know how this is. I guess if you got a yogurt land near you, I don't have one anywhere around. I got one pretty close. I'll fuck one of these up. How about another question? We've only done one. This is unlistenable. I want a munch. Squad. I want to munch. I'm sorry that, like, allergies or what have you have kept me from... Really squealing. I just don't have much in me. It's like a bassy, like, extreme more than words take on the Munch Squad theme song. It's very depressing. Um, now, I'll tell you what's not depressing, though. The latest and greatest in quick service dining. Uh, this week's breaking news takes us to a, dar- a doorstep I don't think we've darkened before, but it's one of my favorites when I'm headed south, headed to the beach at Zaxby's. Ooh. Oh, never even heard that yeah. word said out loud. It is both, well, uh, I believe, a restaurant chain and uh, potentially an alien species. <laughs> Yes, when I'm having a Zax attack, I see a doctor, (laughs) but he recommends to me usually that I should head into Zaxby's, which is like a chicken place without the bigotry, or at least they're better at cloaking it. I have no idea. But um, Zaxby's has announced a promotional partnership with Sony Pictures for its upcoming action adventure film. Sorry? Wait. What would you guess? Chicken attack. Chicken Sprint. Chicken. Sony Pictures is making Chicken Sprint, uh-huh. presumably a spiritual successor to Chicken no, Run. Is I'm that sorry, what you're Justin, suggesting? Justin, is actually a prequel to Chicken Run. Okay. Uh, it's The chicken is building up steam. Um, Griffin? I mean, let me look at the list of films that this. That, that will be too easy. It's Jumanji. Oh. The next level. Now, see, I was going to that- say per- perhaps Sex Tape 2 or maybe. Miracles from Heaven 2 or Goosebumps 3. Zaxby's, the fast casual fan favorite. God, these places have a lot of different ways of saying bad. A lot of fun ways of saying not good. <laughs> We've got a cult following here at Zaxby's. Yeah, this fast casual fan favorite for chicken fingers, wings, and salads. Don't think so on the last one. I don't agree. <laughs> Launched its limited time Southwest Chipotle and Smokehouse Cheddar barbecue filet sandwiches can you imagine standing at a fucking register and they're like what will you have and i'll say um could i have the southwest chipotle bbq filet sandwich please it's hey, embarrassing a, they need numbers is that the and sandwich also, tie-in because i don't see the connection well travis maybe it'll become more clear to you when you slurp down an extra extra large jumanji citrus fizz huh I don't think if I was a family brand like Zaxby's, I would make it so easy to say jizz accidentally (laughs) in my restaurant. (laughs) You are basically begging for it. Jumanji citrus fits. And here's the thing, like right there'll be a moment where you accidentally say like Fumanji and like you'll keep talking, but your brain will be like, oh no. Can I get a spiraling? Oh no, I'm about to say jizz. I would stop Love talking. <laughs> Can I get a mouth? Quit it. Abort. You're about to say jizz. <laughs> oh boy, I would I am parched. I would love a Fumanji jizz mist. Ah <laughs> beans. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, you wanted a we you wanted stri- a Fumanji jizz mist with beans? Yeah, I may as well. <laughs> yeah. We strive to give our guests exciting flavor options, and our new Southwest Chipotle and classic smokehouse cheddar barbecue sandwiches do just that, says Zaxby's chief marketing officer, Joel Bulger. Don't you think that if they're, there should be a law where if you're going to put a quote into a document, you must first say the phrase out loud with your human mouth, or illegally it can't be written down as a quote. Like Joel actually had to say out loud, uh, we strive to give our guests exciting flavor options, and our new Southwest Chipotle and classic smokehouse cheddar BBQ sandwiches do just that. Joel then continues the great tradition of Munch Squad uh, providers being defensive in their quotes. He says, teaming up with Sony Pictures on Jumanji, the next level, just makes sense. <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> it's like they're doing a Jumanji and we got some new fucking sandwiches and some citrus jizz. Damn it. Damn it. I did it again. Now, Justin, you haven't seen the first Jumanji. The, well, the, the remake sequel. The I've tried personal. several times okay. to watch the second Jumanji. So, but you I have, have not, not reached successful. the point where uh, the Rock just barrels the camera and says, "My God, it burns so much! My citrus jizz." <laughs> get it out! Get it out! Please get, get it, it out. out of me! What is this horrible? Curse? A scorpion got me on the, my ding, my thingy, thingy, and it's bur- it's hot, hot. It's a hot, flaming hot fumanji mist in there, and. <laughs> I could really use some help here. I'm gonna jump off this. I'm gonna jump off this cliff stair. so I can respawn and get a new life where my pee pee isn't like so full of scorpion vin. I think the sandwiches are too much. The Southwest Chipotle fillet sandwich has ham breaded fillet, pickled jalapenos, pepper jack cheese, spicy chipotle aioli, fresh lettuce, and tomato all served on a toasted potato bun. Does that sound good? I mean, it That's- would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would rip me into pieces. The la- Does that sound like a last sandwich worthy of your last sandwich? <laughs> it, would sh- it would shred me up and scatter me over the fucking 2020 Democratic National Convention. Talk- like, it would fuck talk- me right up, but okay. Talk, talk about self-burns. This press release by Zaxby's then goes on to say, these two hand-breaded, made-to-order, customizable chicken sandwich meals are fast, casual quality. Ooh. At quick service pace and pricing. Okay. 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 Wow. Wow. Really? Hey, listen. We Damn. reached for the top, and this is like a sandwich you get at Applebee's, my man. Like, There's that, right? They're exactly saying like you could get the you will eat this sandwich and be like, "Fuck, am I at Applebee's? <laughs> is this a Chili's? Because this is amazing. <laughs> this is fucking so good. Customers looking for a movie themed drink may try the custom oh, limited time Coca Cola freestyle Jumanji Citrus Fizz. Also available in light, thank God. Made with the Minute Maid Orange and Seagram's Ginger Ale. The beverage has a sparkling citrusy orange taste. I wonder how they get it. Is it maybe by mixing <laughs> Minute Maid Orange and Ginger Ale? You just gave me the fucking recipe. I, I'll do it at home. This is so great because I was really craving a Won't You Be My Neighbor Baja Blast. But it's really <laughs> great that I don't have to wait for a movie theme drink. The beverage has a sparkling citrusy orange taste that pairs with either of the new sandwiches. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh the, the, the Seagram's Ginger Ale really helps to push the hard sandwich <laughs> down my throat. What an excellent It's pairing. a perfect pairing. I'm, I'm able to swallow it. Guests are invited to enjoy the drink in a 42 ounce Jumanji, the next level themed commemorative cup. I'm going to save this forever. You're coming home to live with me in a place of honor, Jumanji cup. Zaxby's broad audience base mm-hmm. lines perfectly with the all audience appeal of Jumanji, the next level. But more importantly, they strive for creative execution and have done it again with the spots they created in collaboration with our film. <laughs> Says <laughs> silence. I'm going to read this last name exactly as it's written, and I don't want a single peep to interrupt it. Says Jeffrey Godsick. Ooh. <laughs> Godsick. Munch Squad did it. Godsick. Help God. The God is sick. Executive Vice President of Brand Management and Global Partnerships for Sony Pictures Motion Picture Group. The TV spots are clever and funny. That's all Jeff's got left. <laughs> got one thing left hey i want you to put my entire name and then my insane title and then i'll come back i'll spin back around like oh one more thing the tv spots are clever and funny oh geez okay i don't know how much more of this i can take that's all of that so that's available now so you can go get that shit okay 